Jacob Collier is a controversial musician for a number of reasons. A lot of people have questions about Jacob Collier, like, can you be really good at so many different instruments, or are you just mediocre at all of them? Why does he sing like that? It's so weird. Why do some people really not like him and find his music to be completely impalatable, which is almost 100% for sure not a word? And some people love it. Some people think he's awesome some context. I got into Jake Collier a few years ago. The YouTube video Don't You Know with Snarky Puppy kept on getting suggested to me, so I finally just caved in and I watched it. It was pretty wacky, but it was cool and I enjoyed it. His voice was weird. He was using the harmonizer. Um, I slowly started to get more and more into it. I liked his like mahogany sessions where it's just him and a piano playing like pretty simple stripped back arrangements of his songs. And then I started listening to like the more palpable stuff. I like In the Real Early Morning, Hideaway in My Room. These are songs that they're easy to get on board with and then you try to play them and they're like in D half sharp or whatever and you're like oh but yeah that's what I got into early and it was cool it was very different it was very new it was very fresh and it was explosive that was attractive because you could watch his live streams you could see the personality disgusting you could see the decision making behind it and it's very cool it's very impressive there's no rules no holds bar do whatever you want pick any key obviously a prodigy he's got perfect pitch there's a spectrum of perfect pitch and he's got really perfect pitch so after listening to jacob collier for a while some of that craziness starts to make more sense y your brain isn't trying to figure out oh like what is all this craziness because it's kind of used to it it knows the patterns and then you start to pick up on you know the nuances like the easter eggs and how he references his influences when i was uh, about 14 i played double bass in an orchestra at the royal college of music in london and i was very very mischievous orchestral musician and i remember we were playing finlandia which is a piece by sibelius and i was playing double bass in the double bass section and there's that bit in the movie where it's like You know, the classic Fernando melody, and I was jamming away. You know, and I got the dirtiest looks in my life, you know, from the other people in the, in the orchestra and the, and the leader of the department. It was just like, bro, there are some things you just don't do. And jamming along to, in pizzicato style to a great piece of classical music is one of them. And uh, I didn't learn my lesson. I, I maintained my jamming, but I did it even quieter and even more like deliberately. And anyway, now I musically misbehave for a living. Yeah, he would be the first one to tell you that he's in the stage of his career where he's like exploring things and doing things almost just to see what he can get away with, to see how far he can push the boundaries, to see how far he can push the limit. And I don't think there's really anything wrong with that, but you can't really argue that it takes away a little bit from the musicality of it. It almost feels like it's more of an experiment rather than something that is emotional or heart to heart or storytelling. It's almost just like like he's on a playground of theory and he's just messing around and pulling all the pulling all the strings and pushing all the buttons and just trying a bunch of crazy things and seeing how many layers he can do and like but where's the story i think a lot of musicians go where's the story what are you trying to say what are you trying like what's the emotion here but granted with this massive massive vocabulary he has the potential to strip it back and decide out of all these notes which he knows all of them he knows all the possibilities he can decide if i want to make something sound and feel really really sad he 100 percent has the capability to write one of the saddest feeling songs ever what is the secret sauce how does he do it why is he like this what's going on let's break this down let's do the artist breakdown so first of all he did go to music school his mom taught at the royal academy in london and he went there for a few semesters at least i haven't found any real footage of him saying exactly how long he's been there for but for a little while and he learned piano jazz piano classical piano which is really a technical thing and i think he speaks about this how his brain was so ahead of his hands that it was very frustrating not to be able to play the things that were in his head so he went to jazz school and he learned all this stuff now very important thing right here roll the clip when i was 18 or 19 i was studying in london at the royal academy of music i was studying jazz piano there one of my favorite things about being at college was the bus rides like in and out of of 
the academy and so i would listen to like whole albums on the way one album in one album out it was a mad education it was brilliant and awesome i remember i did like the whole of the beatles from start to finish and it was like whoa that's an insane amount of input and not everybody is like this i know a lot of artists they don't ingest a lot of music but yet they're prolific i think the trend is that musicians that listen to tons of music make tons of music i think i think so what do we have here jacob is ingesting a large amount of different types of music he's immediately digesting it and creating from that new art new music and he's producing and he's doing vocals and he's doing covers and he's doing all the instrumentation bass drums keys glockenspiel a good friend of mine once said that talent is curiosity plus bravery it's a good line shout out yochai the funky hasid but the point is he definitely has both of those things and his mother being a teacher in the royal academy teaching violin if i'm not mistaken definitely facilitated this sort of environment where there were no rules and he was never forced to practice anything never he's like very big against practice and was just given this environment to explore and grow and a comfortable space to do whatever he wanted and figure out how far can you go how far can you take these ideas and that certainly fostered this sort of idea of like there are no rules and if i want to do a song in d half sharp i'm doing a song in d half sharp and uh, and you know and screw your life he starts a patreon and with the patreon he funds his first record in my room and part of this patreon he did a series called like i harm you which is just a terrible name for what was going on harm um is short for unless it was deliberate and then that's hilarious but harm is short for harmonize uh, where you would basically send in like a 15 to 30 second clip of you singing or doing anything musical and he would like make this big session out of it underneath the stars i'll meet you underneath the stars i'll greet you um, and stream the whole thing. So it'd be like six, seven, eight, nine hours of streaming. And you could see him produce in real time. You could see this creativity like just explode out of him in real time. It's very impressive. It's very cool. That really gives you insight into what's going on inside the mind of Jacob Collier. He is self admittedly a maximalist. Maximalist, that's a great word. It's the opposite of minimalist. How much can I pile on this? What more can I add? And you end up with a song like In My Bones. You end up with a song with 480 tracks. Uh, we have a track count today of 418 or 419 you could say and uh, that's actually that's rather tame by my standards i've done the uh, logic sessions of upwards of 700 or 800 tracks so this is a uh, falls nicely in the sort of average in the middle it's a lot it's a lot going on there's probably way more than you even realize going on you listen to these session breakdowns he has these session breakdowns where he goes through every track in the session and there's like sounds in there that you never heard and you heard the song a thousand times harmonies in there that you never heard and you heard the song a thousand times and little tricks and tips that are like very cool the maturity is in learning to use your tools to tell a story rather than showing off your tools tools man where are your tools where people get him wrong is that him showing off is not out of ego jacob collier thinks the song deserves him you really don't get that and if you watch his live streams you don't get that either it's out of fun Woo! that's the vibe but he really has a very humble approach to music and a very childlike and creative and explorative and curious approach to music, which is very, it's really good. It's really good. You, you don't really have that with a lot of uh, a lot of artists these days. It's honestly great. And that's why I enjoy it. I enjoy it because it's fun and there's a lot to learn and it's just cool and different and amazing. Definitely not out of ego. So here's what I would suggest. I would suggest if you have listened to Jacob Collier and you didn't like it, listen to a few of these songs. I, I didn't write any of these down, so listen to In the Real Early Morning, listen to Once You, In My Room, listen to Lua, listen to Ocean Wide Canyon Deep, listen to his Mahogany Sessions. I think he has two of them, Mahogany Sessions. He's also, by the way, assembled a gnarly band, uh, Robin Malarkey on bass. He's had Pino Palladino on a track. I'm just gonna, I have to say Pino Palladino in every video. So he's been, Pino Palladino did play on a track. What has been your experience with Jacob Collier? Did you, did you start off liking him and now not like him? Did you start off not liking him and now you do like him? Um, and even if you do like him, do you listen to him every day? Because I love Jacob Collier, but I can't listen to him every day. I listen to him every once in a while uh, because it's just a lot, you know? So that's my question for you. And then what do you think? What do you think? 
Is this a good take? Is this a bad take? Um, and Jacob, if you're watching and we know that you are, I would love to talk to you in any capacity. So, and I think that concludes that. And that sounds weird for a few reasons. One is that I'm weird. Weird cactus. Baba boy.